Good afternoon. This is Micah Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates, uh, bringing you another True View Exterior Severe Outlook. I'm just kind of updating you on what, how things look with the uh, severe threat for this afternoon. Here's the updated Storm Prediction Center convective outlook for this afternoon. It's mostly the same, but they have backed the uh, thread off uh, farther into western Indiana and farther to, toward northwestern Indiana. This has to do with the fact that, uh, one, we're starting to get some sunshine, and two, the uh, main piece of disturbance is going to come through later. Um, as you recall from my video yesterday, I said that if we, the later timing, late afternoon, early evening, was going to be a bigger threat. If we started to see storms pop in early afternoon, that reduces the threat. That would still be the case. If we start seeing storms popping up with any uh, any number between about 2 and 4 p.m., that will reduce the threat. But once we get to about 4 p.m. and after, then we need to watch almost every single cell for the potential to become a supercell. And it's the isolated storms that are on their own that are the uh, biggest threat. Once they begin to form a line, that threat changes more to a damaging wind threat. So uh, look in the SPC also back the tornado threat back uh, into western Indiana. So the vast majority of the state is not only in a 10 to 14 percent risk of tornadoes uh, today, but also a greater than 10 percent risk for strong tornadoes, EF2 to EF5. So all that cross-hatched area, which is pretty much almost the entire state of Indiana, is under that threat. And, and I, I don't disagree with it, the way things are developing. The uh, wind outlook, again, 15 to 29 percent. That's uh, pushed a little bit farther uh, back into Illinois a little bit more. But um, the other major threat today is uh, large hail. That also has been pushed all the way back into the eastern parts of Illinois now. And again, that has to do with the, a little bit slower timing as we get into the later afternoon the direct sunlight is no longer kind of acting as an inhibitor and you start to get past the heat of the day and the surface heat begins to rise and that allows the the greater lift that's why the late afternoon and early evening is the uh, biggest threat and again you see all this cross hatched area not only means a 15 to 29 percent risk of uh, severe hail but it means a uh, a 10 to a, a greater than 10 percent probability of significant hail of two inches in diameter or larger so large long track tornadoes and large hail are the biggest threats today i would say hail number one the tornadoes number two and then once the it begins to develop a line then damaging winds become a threat damaging this will be also the kind of uh, setup where if you uh, have a storm that develops a hail core when that storm it begins to collapse, then you're at risk for microburst, and those can be just as destructive as an EF1, sometimes EF2 tornado. So, yeah, you can't overlook that either. So I think microbursts are also a threat for today. Looking at the visible satellite from the College of DuPage, um, we can see this uh, clearing area right here that's beginning to move in. And then this area kind of back in here is where we'll start to watch for cells to develop as that all comes through. And you can also see the main cutoff back here with the front, and that's where the big wind shift will be. So that's as that approaches here later this afternoon, that's where we'll begin to watch for severe development. But this uh, sunshine that we're getting ready to see, it, this is definitely a day where any sunshine is bad sunshine. Here's a look at the 15Z High Resolution Rapid Refresh, or HRRR, uh, model. That's um, a high resolution model. You can see this was the line that kind of broke up as it came through uh, earlier. Data did a pretty good job with that. And then it's as we look and see these isolated cells that just begin to pop up, and you can't take where, where the model shows them, you can't take that verbatim. What you just have to know is that storms can just pop up at any point this afternoon, and this will last until the evening hours. And once we're hitting about 11 p.m. to midnight, then it all should form into a line and begin to push away. 
I think for Madison County, our prime threat time is going to be between 4 p.m. and about 8 p.m. will be the times that we'll be under the gun. I would expect a tornado watch to be issued at some point this afternoon. I'd be surprised if, if it's not. At the very least, they'll probably issue a severe thunderstorm watch, but I would expect a tornado watch to be issued uh, given the dynamics that are available. Last thing I'm going to touch on, just for illustration purposes, again, this is uh, still the HRRR model. Um, again, not to be taken verbatim, but this is the dew point. And so what we're looking at is uh, some moisture that's in the air. And as we get into the afternoon, you can see the purples down here in southwestern Indiana and uh, where the dew points go over 70. Uh, this is around 6 p.m. And uh, as those dew points surge to the north, and you notice there's uh, lower dew points kind of out here. Let me circle this. You begin to see lower dew points out and out in here. But, you know, anywhere from Lafayette to Muncie and southwest, you've got dew points above 65. What you watch for a lot of times with these for where storms are going to develop is these purples are indicating a strong low-level jet that it's cranking up from the southwest. And the, the pieces of energy, and I, I learned this from the uh, BAM hand forecasting uh, class a few years ago, down to the southwest, the, a lot of the energy will enter into the uh, lower right quadrant of the uh, jet, and the energy will begin to exit out the uh, upper left. So a lot of times the areas that you want to watch when you get these in the same way with uh, with Cape, and maybe I'll show you the Cape here in a minute too, is you want to watch where right where this begins to drop off, and that's where the uh, energy can be released. So you know, I think this area kind of you know, north central Indiana, basically I seventy, you know, up to maybe as far north maybe as Fort Wayne. I, I think we want to watch here for. Uh, the, for an even greater tornado and hail threat later on and then on off into uh, parts of western Ohio. I think, that, and again, if that uh, jet pulls those dew points farther north, that risk would shift farther north. If the jet doesn't pull it quite as far north, that risk would shift south. But what we're watching for is the exit point for, for this energy. Last thing here, because this uh, video is running a little bit long, and um, here's around 3 p.m. and you can see this is the surface based cape and you see all the reds and oranges to the southwest that's the convective available potential energy that's what cape stands for and uh, you can see that, that begins to surge in that the higher cape values actually stay back in southwestern Indiana you know Madison County kind of you know ends up kind of right on the fringe so it's these areas right in here I really need to change. Let me change my pen color real quick. So it's these areas right in here, right where that do, where that convective uh, available potential energy begins to drop off. That's where the energy actually begins to release. And so these are the areas wherever this occurs, whether it's across our area, further north, further south. Where that cape begins to drop off, that's where we'll want to watch that exit point for that energy and uh, for the potential for the, uh, the stronger storms. So there, there's some indication that could actually occur farther north than what we thought earlier. So we'll keep an eye on it this afternoon as things begin to develop. I'll update you as needed. Uh, last thing, I had somebody ask me a question uh, about they have a home that doesn't have, uh, has a ton of windows, they don't have... A basement. They don't have anywhere safe in their house to go to. If you have a house that's like that, or if you live in a trailer or something like that, you need to stay weather aware. And if storms start to pop up, you need to have somewhere already in mind of somebody you've talked to, a friend who's got a safer house that you can go to to ride the storms out, or somebody somewhere nearby that you can get to on short notice to be able to be safe rather than riding any of these out. Because if you happen to be in the path of one of these storms that you know comes through and you're in a house that you've got nowhere to uh, safe to get to that's interior and away from windows uh, definitely plan ahead for that so that's the last thing i'm going to say i'll update you and i'll go live if necessary uh, this is micah mitchell with madison county weather updates have a great day